fundamental basics that if you start, start to shift it, everything else will shift in your life as well. Some people, by the way, have to have more than enough money to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with whomever they want, contribute the way they want. And if that's their must, they find a way. I know that sounds overly simplistic, but it's true. You know, somebody once said, you can take all the money in the world out of the hands of everybody, out of all the wealthy people in the world who are really successful, give it to other people. It wouldn't take too long. Those people would have it back in their hands. It's not because they're manipulative. It's because they have a standard. Some are manipulative. Don't get me wrong. But they've got a standard of what they're going to find a way to make happen. I'm just simply saying to you, take those three magic words and live them. Raise your standard. And if you really want to do it, then I'll tell you the most important secret. Have you ever done this? Have you ever told yourself you're raising your standard? Okay, I'm gonna go make this happen. I'm gonna go make this much money. I'm gonna transform my kids. I'm gonna create the ultimate relationship of my life. I'm gonna transform my body, whatever it is. And then you don't have strong enough reasons and you don't lose, use it. You don't follow through. It's because you didn't back up your standards with what makes those standards real, and that's rituals. Rituals are where the power is. Whenever we do our Robin's results coaching, and we say Robin's equals results, the way we get results with people it's the same way if you listen to uh, my Ultimate Edge program or back in the old days, Personal Power, or if you went to one of my seminars, you know what I do is I take these huge challenges you got and we break them down into little bite-sized steps. Little things you do each day that after you do them, you get so much momentum that it's easy to succeed. You're not overwhelmed. You have these victory day after day after day on little things. If you went through Ultimate Edge, I'm sure you learned about the hour of power or the 15 minutes to be able to be fulfilled or 30 minutes to thrive where you literally just condition your body and emotion with a couple little rituals. So it doesn't matter what's going on in your world, you feel that strength and it's not fake, it's not some pump up, it's coming from inside you and it works. Rituals define us. See, all the results in your life are coming from your rituals. They start with a standard and then have rituals that follow it up. Like, for example, if you are where you want to be physically, you have very different rituals than if you're not where you want to be physically. If you're overweight, you and I both know you got a different ritual than if you're physically fit. Completely different. You get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do if you're fit? Your shoes are there, you roll over, doesn't matter how you feel, you put on your shoes, you lace them, you start walking, or whatever that ritual is. If you're overweight, you roll over and you have a very different ritual. You might roll over several times to turn the alarm clock off. You go in and get your mocha, smoka, whatever, you know, special coffee. You stop by at Starbucks, whatever the case may be. You have your nice sugar muffin, you know, that's supposed to be really nice for you. Whatever you do, it's a different ritual. If you have a great, passionate relationship, you have very different rituals in how you come home than if you have a lousy relationship. When you come home and the first thing you do is you're tweeting somebody or you're emailing or flipping on the news or you don't even come home, and what are the rituals? Whenever I study people that are successful, what I look for is what's the standard they hold themselves to? And then what are all those little rituals that up? Because think about it. Success and failure are not giant events. They don't just show up. You don't just suddenly become successful or suddenly have this cataclysmic event that makes you fail. It may look that way, but failure comes from all the little things. It's failure to make the call. It's failure to check the books. It's failure to say, I'm sorry. It's failure to push yourself to do things physically that you don't want to do. And all those little failures day after day come together until one day some cataclysmic event happens and you blame that. That event happened because you missed all the little stuff. Do you agree with me? And success, by the way, is not some overnight event. It's all these little things. Success is having a vision. Success is making it compelling. Success is really seeing it and feeling it every day with strong enough reasons. Success is feeling the sense that I'm here to grow and I'm here to give something to the world more than just myself. Success is caring about other people. Success is calling and saying I love you in the middle of the day for no damn reason or sending a note. That'll change your relationship. Have a ritual of something funny, playful, or a surprise you do. How many relationships are dead today because they have no surprise rituals anymore? You need to have some rituals, some cool things you do that nobody else does that gives you a better life than anybody else has. All the little stuff, that's where success comes from. In business, it comes from delivering more than anybody could imagine. All those little things add up, people go, wow, that's who I want to do business with. It's true in any area of your life. So if you look at somebody who's really successful and you think, wow, I mean, they're, they're so amazing, they're such a genius, you got to dig underneath and you got to remember something. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. 
myself and my business people say, how do you get up and speak? And you have no notes and you go for three days and nights and the room is like, everybody's wired and it's incredible. It's like a rock concert. How do you do that? How do you have that confidence? Oh, and you know, it's not confidence, it's experience now. But I did so much behind the scenes and I still do to make things right. I mean, how many people would know that since the time I was 17 years old, before I walk out on stage, still do to this day, wouldn't need to do it, but I still do it. I never walk out there without being in an absolute peak state of mind. You know, there are days my back is hurting, my throat is hurting, or I may have had a challenge, or my father passed away, and I've still got to deliver for these people because my standard is give my all every time. Every event has to be better. Talk to anybody who's been to our events for five, 10 years, some of our trainers, and I'll say, I don't know how he does it. He always finds a way to make it better. That's not an ego thing. That's a standard in me. I have to find the way. And my ritual, though, is, I prepare, I think, I gather new information, I figure out how to put something across better, what do people need, I spend time with our customers, I see what's going on, and before I get on stage each time, I have this little ritual to put myself in a state of mind. And I did it starting like 17 years old, I started doing it, I'd say, I now command my subconscious mind. And I say this out loud several times, this little phrase, set of phrases, as an incantation to kind of condition my mind and body. And I'd say, I now command my subconscious mind to direct me in helping as many people as possible today by giving me the strength and the emotion and the humor and the brevity, whatever it takes to show this person and help this person change their life now. And I started that with a person when I worked with people one-on-one, -on -one, and I would do that for 45 minutes driving in my Volkswagen to go serve and coach somebody for the first time. Now I don't say that person, I say these people and I can go out in the room of 10,000 people and deliver for 50 hours, and I do it every time I come back on stage. It's a ritual, a ritual to go into peak state. Peak states don't just show up, they don't interrupt you. Great ideas don't interrupt you, you gotta pursue them. I talked to Michael Jordan, I'll never forget, at the peak of his career, and got to watch his final game. Saw him backstage and spent some time with him, and it was a pretty exciting time. He was the greatest basketball player I think that ever lived, and has ever lived. And I asked him, I said, you know, what sets you apart, Michael? You know, what is it? And is it God-given talent, ability, skill? What is it? And he said, Tony, you know, he said, I can shoot you straight. You know, it's not, you know, me trying to act humble. He goes, I have a lot of talent, a lot of God-given talent, a lot of skill. I've worked really hard. But he said, really? It's my standards. He said, every day I demand more for myself than anybody else could humanly expect. I'm not competing with somebody else. I'm competing with what I'm capable of. Hmm, magic formula. Because most of us lower our standards, why? because who you spend time with, my friends, is who you become. One of the biggest reasons I started going to seminars when I was like 17 is I had nobody around me as a great role model. I could read about somebody, but being around people, being in that environment was very different. Finding a way to go to work with someone who lived that standard of life was very different. You get around people with low standards and you compete with it, you don't need to compete with it. It's like, okay, I mean, remember Jerry Springer? I don't know if he's still in the air, but you know, I remember he used to get people on the show and I thought, where would he find these people? <laughs> and why would people watch? I'll tell you why they watch. They watch these people and go, my life's still pretty darn good compared to that person. Look at them. You don't have to change your life. All you have to do is find somebody with a lower standard and you'll feel good about yourself. But if you feel that good feeling, it's an illusion. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. And look at the best in the world in anything. Tiger Woods, what's, what's his vision? To win golf tournaments? No, to be the best that ever lived. That's his goal, that's his vision. But here's what's interesting, he backs it up with rituals. If you just have a vision and you don't have the rituals, stop lying to yourself. His rituals are, he started doing things nobody did before. He went and started lifting weights. Golfers lifting weights? No way. He went out and he changed his swing when he was the best in the world because he realized in order to be the best that ever lived, he's gonna have to change his swing. If you don't think about golf, you don't change your swing when you're the best. And he went and retrained himself because he has different rituals than other golfers. Now many people are modeling his rituals to get better. It's amazing. You know, you look at somebody like uh, Michael Phelps, the 2008 swimmer, won seven, you know, only two people I think in history, if I remember correctly, that have gotten seven gold medals in one session. And here's a guy, he's got number six under his belt and he's exhausted and he's going in for that final swim. I'm sure you remember. And how does the guy win by one hundredth of a second? Do you think that was some massive skill that got him over the top? Or was it a standard that says, this is who I am. 
I am the champion and no one is taking this from me. And somehow in those final milliseconds, hundredth of a second, he pushed himself just beyond his competitor. 